first crush in high school? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, um, my first crush was probably Lance O'Pry. Duncan Huey. Chris Mitchell which I hope never watches this. Brian Peterson. Matt Kuda. C.H. Herman, he was tall, dark, and handsome. You know, the big stud on campus. He was a couple years older. The guy who got the, the leads in all the plays, was very handsome, big man on campus. Oh yeah. He was just kind of that hot, buff guy. He was punk. He had like that little mustache that he was trying to grow in, and my mom was freaked out because he had facial hair and he was 14. But was a hoe. Just funny, really funny guy. My parents were very brilliant because they hired him as my yard boy. But that didn't quite work out. <laughs> I had a raging crush on him for three years. Never said a word to him. Never. He told me I was the smartest girl he ever knew, so he could never date me. I ended up dating him for three years, and we're best friends now. I ended up dating him a little while my sophomore year, so... Dreams do come true. That would have ruined it. Ab absolutely ruined it if I'd actually had to talk to him because then I would have found out that he was a jock with too much money and probably would have uh, hated me. <laughs> my first kiss. <laughs> I don't remember my first kiss. Oh God, my first kiss. Mm, so lovely and wonderful and magical. Daniel? Oh my gosh. I think it was his best friend, actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was my crush's best friend who I dated first. <laughs> That's so bad. I had to get closer to the crush, you know? No. Uh, <laughs> a kid who lived down the street rode over to my house on his skateboard, ran over my foot. I was crying, and so he kissed me. I was in the eighth grade. This is actually very funny because I don't like this kid at all. I don't remember where it was. We had a lot of gum, and it just kind of happened just randomly. We had a ketchup bottle and we spun it and it hit him and all I remember is winter fresh everywhere. It was just a <gasps> and I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, I remember it was by his car outside my parents' house, you know, like walking to his car. Okay, I'll see you later. That was so awkward. <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did that. It was very weird. It was very weird. I mean, you know, before it was all my, my teddy bears and stuff, you know, and it's not the same thing. <laughs> so embarrassing to think about. I'm like sweating. <laughs> you know, this is my first kiss. Look, I'm just really desperate. I just want to have my first kiss and I'm sorry that you're dating him, but I don't like him at all. This is like a long, long time ago. So I didn't even like him. And now he still thinks that I like him and he'll still be like, hey, yeah, I was your first kiss. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I never liked you. You were a pity person, okay? But yeah, it was pretty awkward. <laughs> okay, anyways, next question. <laughs> You really want me to say this? Oh God, okay. My most embarrassing moment was at a pep rally. I was in choir and we were doing a Messiah performance. I gained a little bit of weight in ninth grade. I was wearing this red dress and these pantyhose and I used to be very, very prissy and I wore dresses every day. I fell off the bleachers. Oh my gosh. I fell off the stage. I sat down at lunch. Somebody picked me up. And my pants split open. <laughs> and they log rolled me down the entire stand in front of everybody. By the time I got to the floor of the gymnasium, my legs went, boo, it happens. In front of the entire school, my skirt was around my waist. I didn't have a jacket to cover anything up, so I had to run to the bathroom with my hands on my butt. To me, that was the most embarrassing moment. That almost brings me to tears, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Freshman year. I had on a tank top. My first time wearing a thong. And I had on a strapless bra. And I came from a little private school. A little good girl. <laughs> <clears throat> My mom picked me up after school. We're all coming out for exams. And then this, we're in this skirt. I thought I looked really good that day. And these are my friends, okay? Yeah friends. And I came walking out. One of the guys was like, oh, let's go pull down the skirt down. And I'm like, in the middle of the hall. And he goes, boo! Pulls it down. <gasps> When you have shock, you don't move. I had shock. My life is over. I stood there, okay, like a deer. Maggie, what is going on? I was like totally like, oh my God. I looked down, my strapless bra, which had a little padding because I'm not very big, had moved down. Bent over, pulled the bottom of my skirt up, realized, oh my gosh, I'm pulling the bottom up, rolled it back down, then rolled the top of it up. And I'm like, oh. So I had four. Titties. Then it happened again. Breasts. And all my friends just like, oh, 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 oh. Whatever I can say on camera. <laughs> I'm so mad at them for that. 
and it was very crucial and, 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 and heartbreaking. And that was embarrassing. I just felt like a bigger nerd. Very embarrassing. But that's okay because I got a little junk in the trunk now. So put on my pants anytime. I didn't really have the most embarrassing moment. I guess I skipped out on that. It's good. I played Becky, and she is the, I think, 11 year old, 10 year old MIT grad who's very brilliant, of course, but she's not quite um, developed mentally to handle the, the antics that are going on in a high school setting. So she's very sensitive and kind of goes through a emotional roller coasters where one minute she's very aggressive and she's in charge, she's in control, and the next minute she's breaking down, hiding behind a curtain, crying. It's a lot of fun. Raise a bitch. Um, and it's not really me. That's the funny part because I think I'm a pretty nice person, and it's just really fun to go out of character like that. I play Himeko Katagiri. And she says Maho all the time. She's a spaz, badly in need of Paxil. Um, she goes like 100 miles per hour. She likes to tell Becky how totally omega gorgeous she is all the time. And, and she's just, uh, she's a hoot, definitely. I play Karumi. And she is, unfortunately, the boring girl. And um, when she, when everyone tells her that she's boring, she gets very upset, runs into the rabbit cages, and cries. I play Masusa. The sad, 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 desperately sad bunny who has no thumbs and can't pick up anything. I play Miyako, the little angry nerd with the cool glasses, and I do wear red glasses sometimes. So I, I feel I kind of, you know, look like her sometimes. Okay, so my character is Ichijo, and she's a little bipolar, I guess you could say. She tries, she has this meek and quiet side to her, but then all of a sudden she'll just snap and lose it, and she actually ends up killing the bunny rabbit. And, yeah, she tries to fit in, but the other girls just don't accept her, and she struggles with that a lot. Sure, I break down all the time and hide behind curtains. Um, no, I can't say I went to MIT. Um, when I was 10... I was probably playing with mud pies and dolls. I don't know. But um, uh, the, the manic part of it sometimes, yeah. On the inside. <laughs> I'm kind of, well, I don't really speak my mind like she does. I do under my breath, though, when nobody's watching. I would definitely say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm partially like my character. I'm bubbly and easygoing, and I'm definitely talkative. I can definitely talk your ear off and, you know, either like me or hate me type of thing. So, yeah, I am. She is cool. I really like being mean. Yeah, I like being mean. It's, it's nice. And uh, she's all bitchy and nerdy and crazy. And I'm not so much nerdy because, uh, like, I'm not a big, you know, into school person, but I am mean at times. If you get on my nerves, I'm like, oh, my God, can you just, like, chill out and stop and get on my face? Yeah, I'm like that a lot. So I could, you know, I really, I feel with her. I'm not boring at all, um, but I guess in a way, I'm very sensitive to what other people say, and so, you know, I can relate a little bit, but I'm not boring at all. I would say I'm a little bit fiery. I'm an Aries, so I obviously have the fiery blood in me, but no, I've never killed anybody. I've never killed a bunny rabbit. Maybe my fish, because I wasn't very good with goldfish, but never a bunny rabbit. All I know is that I have no thumbs. And then I'm very sad. <laughs> no <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> hmm, that's a good question. I think that I got the part because I can talk really fast and loud, and my voice has that annoying pitch to where I, or I can make it annoying to where it's, it's perfect for the character because she's just annoying and fast and bubbly and blah. And that's how I talk. <laughs> but when I heard the voice of Becky in Japanese, I was like, oh my god, she sounds like me. Because she had a little, like, raspiness to her voice in the Japanese. I was like, ooh, I could do that, I could do that. And it just looked like such a cute show that I think I went psycho on Steven and even called him, like, you have to give me that part, please give me that part. I want that part so badly, oh my god, oh my god. Because I just thought it was so cute. And I love to play those manic characters that, you know, turn on a dime. It's just a lot of fun to do. I think I got the part because I went to the director, Stephen Foster, and said, I really want this part. <laughs> I think that's why I got it. I was scared at first because, you know, I don't, you don't really, this doesn't come around every day. But since me and, you know, Stephen's relationship is like this, 
we <laughs> like I really I have fun. I think because I'm doing it with him and I have I have fun with um with the whole process and everything. It's just cool to be somebody else and like see the cartoon like back at you after you are you know watching it. It's just kind of like, "Oh, that was me." Okay. Oh, there I am again. Well, I got the part um, a friend of mine had told me about ADV Films, and I came in and I auditioned for Steven. And then he just called me in and I auditioned, and I did my voice along with the animation and saw if it matched up well and did different kinds of voices, and I guess I was just a good fit for the character. I first got in the booth, I was really confused on what to do. Steven had to walk me through it, but I got, I got the hang of it pretty quick, and it's a lot of fun. It's really neat. I wish everybody could do it, but they can't because only the talented people can. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like such a fatty in this desk. 